Hey everyone, I had a brain fart. So when I'm building my Tiny Picos, this is a Rev5 board by the way, or any particular PCB, I'm always, whether I'm under the microscope or under the magnifying glass, I've always got like my parts on a bit of a tray and I've got parts that I'm like emptying out of strips that are falling on the mat and I'm always rotating the board around trying to get the right orientation and sometimes when I'm using like for instance the microscope and I've got an iron in my hand or I've got my tweezers with a part in there and I'm trying to move the board and there's solder paste on the board and I get my finger in it and I smear it yeah there's uh, a lot of things not great about how I've optimized my build process and of course as some of you might know or have gathered I've been intensely looking into pick and place machines of varying sizes and costs but until I am prepared to bite the bullet on one of those I've been thinking about how I, I can improve my manual build process to make it easier for myself and it occurred to me that I could solve this spinning the board to orient the part to be able to get it right rather than having to turn my arms around like this which is a bit awkward especially with 0402 parts butting up next to each other so closely and so I had the idea of here's my uh, PCB way pen I had the idea of building like a little mini lazy Susan kind of what we had at Yumcha in China for our meals a lot so it's basically just a spinning disc that was sitting on like a, a bearing in the middle where the board could be on it and I could be spinning this around not having to put my finger on the board or touch anywhere while I'm working and be able to orient the part accordingly. And all it would really take is some 3D printing and a bearing from like a fidget spinner, I guess, something like that. Because as you all know, that spins nicely. It doesn't have to be a super fast spinning one. This one's got a little bit of friction, but that's okay. So technically there could be something on the top, something round that span according to this and I could just rotate the outside of it. And then I thought, well, hang on. What's if around the outside of it, I put little compartments? This is obviously not drawn to scale because I probably wouldn't be able to get a tiny pico in the middle. What's if there was compartments around here that all my parts could go in? Not for permanent storage, but just to be able to put some resistors in there and some caps in there and maybe a a Pico and a, a serial chip and I don't know an LDO and a battery charge what's if I could populate the outside with all the parts I needed for a build even multiple parts to do like two or three builds and I could have access to them and I could be spinning it around and picking and placing the parts off and putting them on the board all without touching the board now I generally lay my parts out on this tray before I do a build and I normally put my ICs or anything that's recognizable but what I don't put is the passives because with the 0402s there's no marking on them so you know I've got 11 different types of passives that I'm putting on the board and I'd forget which one was which so my little label printer can actually print quite small writing as you can see definitely too big for here unless I was putting them on strips but what's if I built these compartments big enough that I could stick the little labels on the little compartments and then I put loose parts in there and I could always know which one was which and I could lay out everything I needed before I did my board build. That would be ace. So I'm gonna build this right now in Fusion. Let's go. I wanna start off with a circle that has 100 mil as a working area because I wanna potentially put some components around the outside of the work area to make it easy to grab them and place them. I'm going to start off at about 130, I think. That gives me a good 30 mil around the outside to place components and give me enough of a working area in the middle, at least for the tiny Pico boards or anything that's small. I could even potentially get a reflow master inside that. So it's a good starting point. So I'm going to need to put a rod down the middle of it that's going to sit inside the bearing that I'm using. So the inside post needs to be approximately eight millimeters in diameter to fit inside of the bearing. So I'm just gonna put another circle here and it's gonna be eight. That's gonna be the post. Now what I'm building right now is the top section. So this is what's going to be sitting flat on top with the post pointing down to sit inside the bearing and then the bearing will sit in a base. So that's pretty much all we need for the top other than 
working out what we want to do with compartment areas. So I might just grab another circle now and take it to 80. So that gives me about 25 mil on each side. And now I need to work out how I'm going to break these into compartment areas. I'm going to create some lines just so I can work out roughly what the divisions might be. So that's a 90, so if we do 30 degrees each time, I'll make sure we snap it on. So that'll give us 12 compartments to put components in. 12 seems like a lot right now, but I think there's about 16 parts on the Tiny Pico, although not all of them are unique. Okay, so we're going to stop this sketch. I'm going to call this top. Now the interesting thing with this is going to be we, we need the top flat, which means we need to print it from upside down because we want the top to be nice and smooth, which means any compartments I build on top are going to protrude from that and potentially print pretty ugly with overhangs and fills unless we do supports inside, which makes it hard to clean. So I'm going to extrude this and I want all the pieces. And I think I want the height of this to be, let's make it two mil. It might be a little bit too thin. Actually, let's make it three mil. It's just safer to go three for now. And of course, when you extrude, it turns off the sketch layout. That's okay. Now, I want to make my post about six millimeters. I don't want it to hit the bottom. So it's gonna to go to the bottom here, grab post, and I'm gonna extrude that up. But I want it to be the three plus six, so it's gonna be nine. And instead of cut, I want join, because I want it to be one piece. And now we have an upside down top that's got the post that will sit inside the bearing. So this is pretty basic. So I still wanna work out what I'm gonna do with the compartment. I wonder if I just make small bumps for them that could potentially not need any support as long as this middle area is smooth. I guess that could work as long as the parts don't fall off the edge. That's the key thing. So maybe we'll look at doing that. What I might do is come back to here and actually draw all my sections on it. Now, what I might do is if I extrude every second section up, just one mil. And then I'm gonna grab each one of these faces and I'm going to do a modify, what is it, shell? And I want it to be one mil, okay. So it gives me little compartments, but they're only one mil high. So I'm gonna now do this, the same thing for these ones. I'm going to do an extrude, negative one, it's a bit funky. It's joined it all together though. Okay, I wonder what will happen if I do a hull or a shell on this. Let's find out. Shell, one, okay, it did work, cool. So I've potentially got a work area in the middle and I've got a whole bunch of little component areas. Oh, I've got some uh, underhang. You can see there's a bit of a gap under here where they worked okay and these ones didn't. So I need to lift this up. Extrude, negative one. No, it'll be one. I want it to be join. I'm really doing this ad hoc right now. Could have done with some planning. Okay, there we go. Compartments are even and we have our little knobby thing on the bottom. And this might print face down. It might be a bit ugly, but it might work. Why don't we just extrude this up? There you go, now that's gonna be flat and the compartments are sunk down. It's got nice and thick now. We'll call this the top. Now I'm gonna need a bottom. So, let's just turn this off. I'm gonna go a new sketch. A new sketch. I'm gonna do a circle again. And I probably want this one to be a little bit wider. Yeah, I'll make it 136. Just enough that I could potentially put a rise on the outside if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna need a circle in the middle that's going to have to be the diameter of the bearing, which is about 22 mil. I might have to uh, hammer it in with my screwdriver. I'm sure that there are people that know about that. 22 mil, that will be the inside bit for the bearing to sit in. And we're gonna need a wall around that. So we'll go make that, I want it to be fairly thick. So that gives four mil around the outside. It's not a huge amount, but it should be enough to hold it steady. I don't wanna waste printing a massive thick piece here to be as thick as the bearing, because the bearing is seven, plus I'm gonna need an extra room, like let's say a couple of mil, so nine. So I don't want this to be nine mil high, the whole thing. So what I might do is do another circle here, make that 126, I'll make it 125. And that's gonna be a rim that's gonna be raised. So let's, let's see what this looks like. 
So we want the base, or everything, to start off being 2mm, and then we're going to want this inside section. So we need 7mm plus the 2, so we want that to be 9, and we want that to be join. That's what the bearing's going to sit inside, and then we want the same height for this outside lip. So the top will sit inside there, the bearing will sit inside here, the top will poke into the bearing, and it's going to sit just on here so it can spin. So the question is, we probably want to drop these a fraction, and go negative 0.2, because we don't want rubbing from the top onto the bottom. Okay, I think that could work. Wouldn't it be interesting if I made this compartments as well? There are pieces inside. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, so there are two pieces, I think, top and bottom. We should print them out and see what happens. Nothing ever works first revision, but yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, export this out. So I'm gonna do a save as SDL. I'm gonna make a project, call it mini PNP. No, not mini. Manual PNP. And I'm gonna create a new folder and call this turntable. And then I'm gonna create a new folder and call this STL. Okay, turn table bottom. And we're going to save as STL turn table top. Okay, let's obviously save this. Okay, now let's open up our slicer. Let's open up our files and drag them in. I'm going to obviously need to rotate them. I don't know if they're both going to fit at the same time. I have to do one at a time. We should start off with the top section to see if these compartments work. So let me just remove the bottom. So we need to rotate the top around the X. We want it to be, I think it's 90 or is it negative 90? No, 90 is good. Okay, yeah, we couldn't get two together. That's a pretty big turntable, much bigger than I was expecting. Okay, that's fine. So we want to go Prusa PLA, infill of 10, 0.2 height. We just want to go the, the quick version. So I'm going to slice it. I'm going to export it. And I'm going to call, put this in manual PNP, turntable, create a G code folder, and turntable top. Point two, blah, 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 all good, save. Now let's print it and see what it looks like. Okay, here's the finished top. Gotta love the Prusa Mark III. Removal heat bed. And there it is. A little bit messy. <laughs> but it didn't need any supports, which is interesting. They're a bit bowed. It's perfect for a rough test, just to try it out. I'll do supports next time. I also could have made it a bit thinner. It's warped a little bit on the sides because it was just free hanging, as you can see. Quite messy, but that's okay. The middle's flat, which is what we need, and it's got the post to spin on. So let's 3D print the bottom. And here is the base. Let's get that off. Oh, a bit of fluff. Awesome. That one's nice and smooth. Let's hope it all fits together nicely. Well, that was fun. That didn't take long to print. <laughs> hours and hours and hours and hours. So, what do we have? We've got a base, and we have a top. And we should zoom out a bit. And all we need to do now is, I guess, see if the bearing fits. Oh, that's a bit tight. Where's that screwdriver? Where's the, the Ivan Miranda joke? Ivan, you're watching? Wow, that's loud. Uh, I think I need a bigger screwdriver. That's better. Okay, that's hard to get in. 
I guess as long as it's straight, that's all that really matters. So let's even see if this works. Oh, look at that. That is going to send my tiny pickup board flying. Yep. <laughs> okay, it's not designed to be spun so quickly. Right. So I need to level it. But the question is... Wow, okay. Will it work? And that is pretty awesome. So I can now sit under my microscope or my magnifying glass and be able to spin this around and work. So I can take parts off here and I can rotate the board, place them down. I can go take a part from here. I can rotate the board, get it the right direction, place it down. Look at that. Now, you can see, like obviously because there was overhang on the printer and I didn't put any supports in, it's a bit funky. It's not the nicest print I've ever done. I might reprint it when I could be bothered. <laughs> but I think this will work. I think this will do. Let's try to put some parts in it and see what it looks like. I guess firstly, before I do that, I want to even see if these labels work. So I need to trim the label down because it's obviously a bit big. I don't know how long it'll stick for or how well it'll stick. But if you can imagine that sitting just there. And then I had a whole bunch of passives in there. Oh, that'd be awesome. So I'll be able to know which one was which. Of course, I'd probably cover the label, so I might have to put the label to the edge. That could absolutely work as a temporary storage. Let's get some... What shall we get? Let's get a Pico D4. Probably the largest part I've got. So there's a, a Pico D4. I'm not going to fill the whole thing. Here's the USB header. Clearly I could fit multiple if I needed to. Here's a switch. There's no switch on the Rev 5 anymore. Because you guys made me take it off. No, it's fine. I volunteered. Here's a random part sitting on my desk. So as you can see, as long as I'm not stupid with how fast I spin it, that is pretty cool. I'm super excited by that. I'd like to get the the bearing further in so there's less of a gap here so it doesn't wobble as much. But it doesn't wobble much at all actually. Much better than I thought it was going to be. That is awesome. That is a win. I'm so excited. So guess what, folks? My Rev 6 boards are on the way. I should have them on Tuesday, which means I should have them in time for my live stream on Wednesday. And if that is the case, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to build my Rev 6, which should be my final revision, Tiny Pico, live on the stream, and it's going to be my very first Rev 6 build. There isn't going to be any, here's one I built earlier. I'm going to open the packet live, and I'm going to build them, and hopefully they're going to work. And if they do, that is done. That is the Tiny Pico version 1, I guess, revision 6, ready for manufacturing in some form or another. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, my little brain fart, my little, hey, I wonder if, if I can keep finding ways of improving my build process and my build time and the level of concentration I need to put into building such a small board, then it's all a win for me. And the longer I can put off buying a picking place, the better it's going to be. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like. Welcome to all my new subs. If you haven't subbed, why not? Please sub. Thank you to all my patrons and I will catch you all on my live stream on Wednesday. Bye.